Hi guys, today I'm here to talk to you about portraiture. Now, every single year that I teach portraiture, I have at least a few students that get really nervous because they think that portraiture is going to be really tricky. But fear not, artists from the very beginning of time have created portraits of the significant people in their lives. Some of the very first portraits, in fact, um, we see from cave paintings. Let me just show you a few examples. Now, in many cave paintings, we might see simplified versions of animal and human forms. We can see humans that are being depicted in a variety of poses. Some even show emotions like frustration, what appears to be contemplation, and maybe even some sorrow. These are emotions that I'm sure many people are experiencing today. They are part of the human experience and they're not going anywhere, frankly. But another thing that we see is we see some images of hunters. Now these people I am sure were seen as heroes because of their ability to provide food for their communities. These providers of food, they're displayed over and over again, showing their importance and their significance during the time. Now funnily enough, as we are living through this crazy time, we can find our own heroes at work providing food for our communities. Unlikely heroes are emerging around us every day from the grocery store workers to the restaurant employees, and even to delivery people. These are essential workers that are providing us with food and the materials that our family need during this challenging time. Now I've searched to see if there's some artists that are depicting these heroes during our time today to show the significance and impact that they're having on our lives. So I found some amazing artwork by a narrative painter named Carolyn Olson, who's from Minnesota. Now, typically Carolyn's work mainly portrays um, women's point of view by painting images of things that are typically dismissed or overlooked, like chores. But recently, she's been working on painting some scenes from COVID-19. And what she does is she is painting heroes from this time and those heroes that we are recognizing as essential workers. In her paintings, we see scenes of bus drivers, of grocery store workers, we see pharmacists, we see people out doing fun things to bring their community together, like playing music to spread cheer. In her paintings, we see all kinds of different people that have been deemed essential workers that are serving our community, and really, they're everyday heroes. And what I really like about her paintings is their colorful, bright nature, their simplified forms, and the slice of life that they're bringing us during this time. One other artist that I want to share with you is an artist from Switzerland named David Perez. David Perez is a street artist and he's been creating murals during COVID-19 of healthcare workers. And his portraits are very realistic. They are the style that I tend to teach my drawing classes. They are based on real human proportions, but he has a little bit of a clever trick up his sleeve. He doesn't have to draw the nose and mouth because obviously healthcare workers are wearing masks right now. So I'm going to be showing you how to draw a realistic style portrait similar to the ones that David Perez draws. Okay, so the first thing we do when drawing a face is we start off by drawing an egg shape. Think about it as an upside down egg where the point of the egg is at the bottom. So it creates a chin like shape. Um, you can go ahead and round out your egg shape. I don't get a perfect on the first try. Next, what we do is we divide into quadrants or quarters. One horizontal and one vertical line will do you just fine. On the horizontal line, this is where you're going to draw some almond shapes to create eyes. Now, your face should be wide enough that you can fit five almond shapes, and that would be the correct proportion for human eyes. I just add in a little bit of a curved line on the inner corners to create a tear duct. And then I move on to adding some circles to create my irises. The iris is the colored portion of your eye. The black dot inside becomes a pupil. And I try to leave a little bit of white on the pupil um, so it looks like a highlight because your eyes are moist so they have reflection on them. You can fill in the iris in darker shades since usually it's going to be blue or brown or green. Now on the inner corners of my eye, I shade in the white just a little bit. That way it helps kind of make a shadow because um, your eyelashes tend to cast a shadow. And speaking of eyelashes, 
you can draw in some curved lines that go away from the center of the face. You don't want your eyelashes to go straight up because that looks a little bit crazy. Drawing in your eyelid crease is really simple. Just draw a slight curve arch above each eyelash and shade the inside and outside corners. Next is where we have some fun with the eyebrows. I just draw in the arch shape that I like and then kind of use individual lines to create hairs. There's a lot of different eyebrow shapes, so you can't really go wrong here. Now, this is where you could throw in your mask if you wanted to do a COVID portrait, but I'm gonna show you how to draw the different facial structures in case you wanna know. So for a nose, it's almost like this little wiggly line. Sometimes it looks a little bit like a, like a little bird that you would draw as a kid, you know, that little swishy bird or like a bat. So it's just kind of a curved line with two half circles on either side. And the bridge of your nose, it actually leads right up in where your eyebrow is. Now, the ball of your nose, that's like the very bottom, the point of it. I just kind of shade that slightly like a sphere, the nostrils, I make like two little black oval shapes. Nostrils are the opening in your nose. For the lips, I draw an additional horizontal line that splits the bottom of the nose in half, the bottom of the face in half, rather. And then I just draw a curved line for the lower lip and like a lowercase m for the upper lip. I try to add lines to give the lips texture and then I fill in with value. Your lips should just be as wide as um, where your pupil is. So that's how you tell how wide to make. All right, then adding in a little bit more of a chin because I felt like my person had sort of a weak chin. So I'm giving them a little bit more space. I can draw a little bit of a cur uh, curve to indicate their chin. Now I want to show some bone structure because of cheekbones. That's part of your skull. So I want to show that anatomy by shading slightly and just blending with my finger. I also blend around the edges of the face to help contour. This brings in some three-dimensional form. Ears, they're going to go from about your eyelid crease to the bottom of your nose. Um, and I just make like a weird peanut shape and just kind of fill it in with some darker sections. Your neck, that's going to go from the outer edges of your eye. Because uh, your neck is pretty thick because your head's heavy. So you got to have a sturdy neck. Shoulders, you should be able to rest an additional head on either shoulder. So they also have to be fairly broad. For hair, you want to make lines that go upwards and then out. You don't want the hair to lay flat against the skull because then it's going to look like you have the world's greasiest hair, and that ain't cute. So I just draw my hairline so that it goes up and out, so it goes above the head. That way there's some volume. You can have fun by adding things like different hairstyles, bangs, a bandana, hair clips. You could have little buns. You could have a hat on. You could have a mohawk, a shaved head. Um, there's lots of ways to personalize these portraits. I'm just throwing in some glasses because I think they're cute. I also added a few freckles. Yeah, there's anything you could do. So anything about these portraits, um, make it look like you, or you can make it look like a friend or a family member. Uh, this is just a practice portrait, so it could even just be a totally random person. But remember that you were trying to show those different facial features, your eyes, nose, mouth. Use that shading to show bone structure, and you're good.